Almost 600 people have signed a petition calling on Clinton County Sheriff David Favreau to resign. Multiple female former officers at his jail have filed claims of sexual harassment and assault. Favreau says he's handled those allegations properly and he's not going anywhere. That's today's story of the day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Claxton Hepburn Medical Center, dedicated to providing patient care and regional services to the people of St. Lawrence County. ClaxtonHepburn.org. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Thursday, March 14th. First up, state police have arrested the former director of a public housing complex in Jefferson County. Jan Hoffman allegedly stole almost $50,000 when she ran the West Carthage Housing Authority. That's a government-funded apartment complex for low-income seniors and people with disabilities near Fort Drum. Hoffman managed the facility from 2016 to 2021, and for most of that time, her mother was the bookkeeper. Based on an anonymous tip, investigators found that Hoffman had allegedly been using public housing funds to buy things for herself, and her mother had allegedly been covering it up. Both have been arrested on corruption charges. Hoffman was also charged with third-degree grand larceny. The story deals with allegations of sexual harassment and assault. It's about eight minutes long. The petition to remove Sheriff David Favreau was started by one of several female former employees who filed lawsuits alleging sexual harassment, discrimination, and retaliation at the jail. Clinton County recently settled with four of them. The women behind the suits continue to push for change at the jail, which Sheriff Favreau says is safe for both employees and inmates. Kara Chapman has our story. Michaela Suttard always wanted a career in law enforcement. She says when she was hired as a correction officer at the Clinton County Jail in 2019, she was ecstatic. Law enforcement was always something that I wanted to do. And literally within the first two weeks of me being there, I had three different female officers warn me about three different male officers. Um, And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Every year got worse and worse. Sutter says one male CO was known for putting his crotch in the female CO's faces and rubbing up against them. She says the male officer's behavior ranged from making inappropriate comments to trying to force the female CO's to hug them in front of inmates. Sutter says everyone jokes around their friends. But this treatment wasn't like that. It's not joking when I have a coworker saying he wants to rape me in the parking lot. Sutter and three other women made these and other claims in federal lawsuits. Sutter says she initially planned to just deal with it. This job was an entryway into the career she'd always wanted. But she says she hit a breaking point when she learned about how one male CO was treating a female inmate. She says he was making advances that made the woman fearful of him. And Sutter wasn't okay with that. Yes, they're inmates, but at the same time, they're, they're still people, and they don't deserve to live in fear. And for however long they're incarcerated, the jail is their home. Sutter says she and other female COs went to the county's personnel department with their sexual harassment allegations in March 2021. The Clinton County Legislature said in a statement that the county takes all complaints about harassment and discrimination in the workplace seriously. Sheriff David Favreau says an investigation focused on the behavior of three male officers. And one of them is no longer employed with the county. Uh, He terminated his employment before I could terminate it. Favreau says the personnel department put out a report, which hasn't been made public, on claims against the other two. The actual stuff that was founded were comments that were made, uh, actions that were done on a particular shift, and it was a a fairly young shift. There were some personal relationships between uh, the officers uh, on that particular shift. Favreau says he put more senior staff on that shift, the idea being that they have more experience and can guide younger officers. As for the COs who were investigated, Favreau says they received harsher punishments than the personnel department recommended. The way the sheriff sees it, the process worked, and his office did everything it could do. Harassment is is an awful thing in any workplace. It it impacts productivity, but it doesn't require termination of everybody that's involved uh, in in every single case. And I think that's that's the difficult thing for some people to grasp. They just think, well, people should be fired for harassment. But Sutter and the other female CEOs say that process didn't work and the problems haven't gone away. According to court documents, the male CEOs were suspended for a month. And when they came back, they and other jail employees allegedly retaliated. 
The women say an undersheriff discouraged further complaints and forbade them from talking about the investigation. They say male officers would undermine them in front of inmates. Suttert says two male COs failed to intervene properly when an inmate climbed on top of her when she and other officers tried to break up a fight. Suttert says when you sign up for a job like that, the possibility of not coming home is always in the back of your mind. But that one incident really just kind of stuck with me for the rest of my time there, and it made it more realistic to me than what it had been before. Five women, including Suttard, resigned from the jail in the two years following the March 2021 investigation. County Administrator Michael Zerlo said in an email that the personnel department has since received one complaint from a jail employee involved in that original probe. He said, quote, the complaint was fully investigated and resulted in no findings. Favreau says he hasn't received any complaints since the investigation. But Suttard claims the same male COs continue to mistreat employees and inmates at the jail. And that's why she hasn't gone quiet about her own experience. They haven't learned their lesson. They're still doing it because in their minds they got away with it. Because they're still there and none of us are. Suttard says Sheriff Favreau, as the leader of the jail, is to blame for all the issues there. That's why she started a petition calling for his resignation at the end of January. So far, more than 580 people have signed it. At a public meeting last month, Sutter told county legislators about the petition and asked them to take a stand. Ask yourselves, if your wife started a job at the jail and came home in tears one day because her co-worker threatened to rape her in the parking lot, would you be okay with it? If your mother wound up in jail over failing to appear and she called you to tell you an officer was forcibly touching her in the closet, would you keep allowing it to happen? The legislature took no action on the petition. Sutter and three others filed federal civil rights lawsuits last year. In addition to the alleged sexual harassment and retaliation, they say they were denied training opportunities and dealt with discriminatory policies. The four women settled with the county in December. County Administrator Zerlo says the county's contribution to the settlements was $50,000. The total amount of the settlements and any other terms aside from payment have not been made public. One of the other plaintiffs, Hannah Sorrell, says she's not happy with how her case ended. I feel like it should have went to trial, but most people don't understand that trial is really expensive. That's why the county settled, too. The county legislature says it wanted to avoid the cost of drawn-out litigation, even though it believed there were valid defenses to the claims. But the issue of workplace misconduct at the jail is not over yet. The Albany Times Union reports that the state attorney general's office is investigating the jail and spoke with all four women who settled. The AG's office did not return a request for comment, but Favreau confirmed the probe and says his office has provided documentation. Sorrell says she has a lot of faith in the AG's office. I really hope that the attorney general takes this seriously and um, we get justice. Three other sexual misconduct lawsuits involving the jail are making their way through the courts. One was filed by a fifth woman who says she also experienced sexual harassment and discrimination while employed there. Court documents say her case is set to go to trial next year. The other two were filed by former inmates under the Adult Survivors Act last fall. The women say they were sexually abused by a CO and an instructor, who Favreau says was not an employee of the jail. Anna Cole of the New York-based firm Levy Konigsberg is the former inmate's attorney. She says their abuse, combined with the former employee's allegations, shows there's a systemic issue at the facility. You just don't have, you know, a pattern of sexual misconduct, whether it's harassment of an employee or sexual abuse of an inmate, you don't have that pattern without a culture that tolerates it, without a system that fails to prevent it time and time again. Favreau says his office has prepared its defense for those cases. County attorneys have requested their dismissal. As for Sutter's petition, Favreau says he has no plans to resign. He points to how he was overwhelmingly reelected to a sixth term in 2022. We've had a lot of successes. We've worked hard and we have a great workforce right now. I'm not leaving it. Suttard says what keeps her going, even after leaving the jail, is the desire to make sure the inmates and employees there are safe. Favreau says they already are. Kara Chapman, North Country Public Radio, Plattsburgh. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by Eddie Lawrence of Moira and Caretaker of Canton. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.